What's up, New Hope family? Welcome to New Hope here. Welcome to the lobby. My name is David. I'm our online campus director. So glad that you've joined us today. It's going to be such an awesome service. We're very excited about it. If you're new to New Hope or you don't normally join us online or you don't normally join us this early and you're like, what's happening right now? <laughs> this is called the lobby. This is just where we hang out before the service gets started, like you might in a physical lobby yes. if you were at an in-person campus. With me today is my friend Michael. Hello. Hello, friend Michael. Hi, David. How are you doing? Sorry, friend yeah, David. Yeah, Hattie's going to be furious <laughs> if you don't say friend David. Uh, glad to have you here. Thanks. Michael is our it's online, so good to be here. online worship director, tech human. Um, anything else? Am I missing anything else? Uh, I feel like Songwriter extraordinaire. Well, I don't know about that. Yeah, that's what we're going with in the future. Uh, oh, and okay. in fact, our producer today could change that on the website. Friend Olivia is producing today. Hi, friend Olivia. Hello, friends David and Michael. Yeah, that was good. Can you change Michael's title on the website to songwriter extraordinaire? Can I say yes, but not actually change it? <laughs> you, should, <laughs> you should probably say no then. I think honesty is important. I'm going to go with no. Okay. okay. Well, I'm going to pretend that that's what it is going forward. Mm. That's cool. Uh, you may notice um, our, our set's a little different it is. than it has been in the past. We're at a table. And we oh. have this. Oh, yeah. That's we right. do are. We are at a table. Although we've used a table a couple times now on, I was on the just lobby. Trying to be silly. We're, we're much. We're much looser with our lobby uh, form yes. these days. The two chairs, two same chairs, and the table. Those. Those all shift. And right. I mean, I guess like the producer stands now too. Yes, and and <laughs> Olivia's very unhappy. She has to stand today. I'm not. I'm very. Excited. I would be unhappy it's personally. Not, it's not her fault though. It's the microphone stand's yeah. fault. Blame the mic stand. Yeah. That was, that was, was that Vanna White or was that more like uh, the Price is Right people? Oh. Like, um, I don't know. It's kind who of get like, like a... really excited to show you like a can of peaches. Mm -hmm. like, ah. Look at this brand new pillow with feathers in it. Ooh, that was good. Thank you. You're in, I'm, like doing the announcing end. That's really good. The uh, modeling? What are they? Who? What? What are they doing? There? I don't know. I, I am a model. I feel like I'm not a part of this the conversation. <laughs> I am Michael, a model. Michael, why don't you just get out of here, Olivia? You can... <laughs> I'll just drink Thank my coffee. You. Anyway, back to this thing. <laughs> we have a flannel graph behind us. We do. Michael, what's a flannel graph? Well, it's a graph made of flannel. <clears throat> so the material is material. I can't talk today. Mm -hmm. It's been rough. Material is flannel. Wait, it's not fleece? And it's not fleece. Despite common <laughs> I got a death stare mm. from Olivia. And we should probably I explain would why. Beg Despite to common differ. Mis misconceptions, <laughs> fleece and flannel are not the Two same thing. Two different things. <laughs> yeah. Right? Right, Olivia? Mm, it depends on who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So please continue. Uh, and Michael. In the eighties and nineties probably yeah. is the, the it, height of it. Yeah, the height of it. It still is a thing it that's used today. Used. But uh, certainly not as much. These are often used for teaching purposes. Mm -hmm. in the, Very in common the Christian in, church. in churches, yeah. And they would use them to tell Bible stories. And so we have a new series called Flannel Graph. Okay, I feel like you should be saying it. this because you're the host, but I'm going to take over for a little I bit. Asked you to, I, I wasn't asked a you part of that over. conversation earlier. So right. Now <laughs> this, is your, this is your time to shine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a series called Flannel yeah. Graph, Stories Jesus Told. We're mm -hmm. gonna, uh, we're, our presenters are going to have some parable presenters. presenters. I don't pastors know works, too. Pastors. <laughs> That's why I don't do this for a living. Wait, I, never mind. <laughs> I was just going to say this is the weirdest <laughs> lobby episode ever, but if you watched our lobby episode last week. Yeah, where's my turkey? Had, yeah, <laughs> where Hattie just gave us a hunk of lunch meat for Father's Day. Did she really? Yeah, that's a real Is thing. that what all the that's, lunch meat is in the fridge right now? No, no. That, it was, that's where she got it from. Yeah. But, oh, I yeah. see. Oh. It's pretty good turkey for the cheap stuff. But anyway. What were we talking about? We're <laughs> flannel graph. We're, we're going through parables. Yeah, we're talking Jesus about a lot told. of parables, stories that Jesus yes. told uh, to teach. It's going to be a really cool series. We're, and Pastor Hattie's kicking it off today. Yes. We're hoping at some point the, the pastors will actually use the flannel graph That'll be great. to tell the stories. And really difficult while preaching. But <laughs> yes. I believe they just need to channel their inner, like, 70 year old woman from like 1988. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because uh, they were amazing at it. They were very good. When we, uh, how many years ago would it have been? Two years ago now, I think. It was, might have been, maybe it was even last year, but we went down to Arizona for a family reunion and my grandma oh brought a flannel graph oh and told the kids a story on That's it. Wonderful. It was fantastic. My kids had never seen a flannel graph before. Yeah. So I don't know my. Like my cousins and their kids live near her, so maybe she does that normally for them. But for my kids, it was a first time experience. <laughs> what I'm hearing and then is Layton a... went and played with it for like oh, yeah. forever afterwards, taking all the stuff off. It's what I'm great. hearing is a special guest opportunity. Grandma Green? Mm -hmm. Grandma, Grandma Green. Green. If you can make it, we will definitely oh, have you tell a story. She's in Arizona. 
She is in Arizona. So let's, we'll go to let's them. Let's plan a, like a follow-up series in like December, <laughs> January. We can go to her. <laughs> just when it happens to be cold here <laughs> and not so cold I'm just there. Just throwing out. You know what? You got to give some space. <laughs> right, right. After right. the series yeah. ends and to have that's a follow-up. That's a good idea. Yeah. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I think Grandma would be on board with it. Oh, perfect. Yeah. I, I like our little uh, <laughs> hodgepodge <laughs> flannel graph here. This, like, this this part is very impressive. Yeah. And then uh, Pastor Andrea came in super clutch <laughs> by having some, like, pieces, and we just pulled some random ones out and made it beautiful. It's, it's I love wonderful. it. I like our river. I hope they can see that past yeah, your broad shoulders. Yeah. My favorite is the axe in the stump. Yeah, which I don't know, I don't know if you can see that. I'm also proud of that. Yeah, I, <laughs> I feel like we're pointing out favorites, so I'm going to hmm. join. Olivia? Um Me? I like the oh. little oasis because it's just so <laughs> random. I mean, everything's a little weird, but like... the scene. What are you talking about? It's really strange there. Um, and yes, Michael, you're my second favorite. Oh, okay. You're <laughs> oh, you, you. thought you. You, you thought it was going to be you when she said we're picking favorites. Yes. Oasis yeah. takes first. That's understandable. <laughs> Yeah, I'm very excited uh, for this series. I think it's going to be really fun. I mean, it would be a really great series even if we didn't have a sweet flannel graph right. on the wall behind us. But it's going to be even cooler because yes. we do have a mm -hmm. sweet flannel graph. Also, one of my favorite bands all time. That's true. A yeah. really cool Christian indie band is, I don't think they exist anymore. But they Sad did band. exist, and they were known as Flannel Graph. Yeah, and if you're watching, you can come join us some Sunday. The if, flannel, yeah, flannel I'm, I'm guessing the members of my one of my favorite all-time bands, Flannel Graph, watches us every Sunday. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, come hang out. We'll do a flannel graph concert in front of our flannel graph. Ooh. Do you think they ever did that? I never got to see them in person. Oh. But if I was in a band called Flannel Graph, I would exclusively have a flannel graph as like my set for all my concerts. Maybe they play behind the flannel graph and then somebody's out there moving <laughs> Somebody stuff around. Somebody moves a piece of a <laughs> flannel version of them. That'd be very cool. To be a thing that happens. Olivia, can you make that happen? Yeah, I'll make that happen. For our host, for like, for the lobby next week, can you have made mm -hmm. flannel versions of me and Michael <laughs> yeah. and you or whoever we end up having on? Sure. And then animate the entire episode of yeah of That'd the be lobby. Great. That'd be great. I'd love to do that for you guys. <laughs> You'd, you would love to. You won't, but you would love to. <laughs> I would love to. Yeah. Didn't we once ask for that? We asked for some. If if anybody anybody that joined us they could animate a did, it could episode. animate an episode of the lobby, and we never heard from anybody. I think we should but. expand the invitation to those watching. If any of you guys would that's like. That's what. Yeah, well, that's what we did in okay. the past. But I think we should do it again. So please. Yeah. Please. If, if you guys would be interested in creating flannel characters mm -hmm. of David and Michael and mm -hmm. acting them out as a lobby scene, that would be we would use that for our lobby next week. We, well, let's. We would consider oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't have to be next next week. Yeah, we, this uh, this series, series. Yeah, this series goes all summer. We've got a good amount of time to be able to use your flannel <laughs> characters. Your flannel creations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, make well, sure Michael has a hat because Michael always has yes. a hat. Yes. And they can be any size, life size, if you want. <laughs> if you want to go all out. Yeah, I'm six foot six, um, <laughs> so enjoy making that one. Or Maybe. the size that, or you know, the size of those. Yeah, that would. I, I would like to. Be proportionate to this oasis oh right here. So. so you can float in the oasis <laughs> yeah. the whole service. That's what I'm looking for. Mm. Yeah. I'm, I'm on board. <laughs> Let's make this happen. Yep. Let us know, New Hope family. <laughs> I bet we've got someone. Someone out there right, right now is like, oh, I could probably do that. Yeah. Yeah. How much time do we have left? We've got about a minute and a half. Okay. A oh, minute wow. and a half. That's, mm. that's good. Yeah. Time flies when you're talking about flannel graph. Yeah, it's a real fun topic. So <laughs> I would like, this is what I want everybody that's joining us live to do. And if you're not joining us live and you're on YouTube, I want you to jump in the comments and do it in the comments. So either way, uh, there's an expectation for you. So <laughs> nobody nobody gets off. Everybody oh. everybody has to take part. Jump in the chat and let us know if you are familiar with flannel graphs. If you ever either taught like using one or were taught by someone else while they used one or maybe you just like oh I know that they existed but I think that because that's kind of where you fell right like yeah you were aware of their existence but they weren't a part taught, of you oh you were I was taught with them too okay when I was younger oh wow okay. it was I think like for VBS or Awanas mm -hmm. okay. yep yeah uh, I remember. The last final option is if you like the band flannel graph. Yeah. Oh my word! If you like the band flannel graph, <laughs> like let's be best friends. I just call them flannel graph. <laughs> that's I a different. That's I'm a cover band. I'm struggling <laughs> today with words. Uh, it's all, it's flannel graph. Two words is the band. Oh, okay. But this is one yep. word. So if you get confused, they're they're a, they're a wonderful band. They've got some great songs. They have a song about Joseph that I yeah. love. They have a uh, they have a lot of good songs. Mm -hmm. I like Flannel Graph. Post your favorite song by Flannel Graph yeah. if you like the band. Yeah. 
I really want to hear if people like I do. That's, like how yeah. many people remember these. I have such yeah. fond memories of like being in the basement of my yeah. church in the little classroom. Like yeah. you did the yeah. big group where you sing in the songs. We, and like we had a Father like, Abraham had many sons, yeah. and then you go into the small group, and you're like, it's flannel graph day. This is going to be. I, a good I think day. I remember it from Bible camp. I think okay. That's where I remember uh, it most. Yeah. Like like little kids Bible yeah. camp. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was probably for that. me, like something like that, yeah. like a vacation type. Did style. they ever have one this big though? Probably not. And the one we're gonna have at our at our Wilson, Wilson campus yeah. is <laughs> going to make this one look tiny. It's be so giant. I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty excited. It's gonna for be that. cool. Yeah. So well, I think it's probably time to get to the service. Yep. Yeah, we yep. probably went over. <laughs> a little. Bit. We heard a man and a half. We're like, well, that's probably like ten minutes. Yeah. But New Hope family, we're so glad that you're here. We love you so much. It's gonna be such a great service as we kick off our summer series, Flannel Graph Stories Jesus Told. Uh, we yeah, it's gonna be such a great service. Thank you, Olivia, for producing yeah. the OG producer of the lobby. It's glad I'm glad to be back. Yeah, I'm glad to be back. Thank you, friend Michael, for hanging out, and thanks to all of you. And we will see you in just a minute. What's up, New Hope family? Welcome to New Hope here. We are so glad that you have joined us today. We are kicking off our summer series, and as you can see behind us. Things are different than they normally are. If you've been a part of the church for a long time, mm -hmm. you might know what that Maybe. is. Maybe I kind of knew, kind of didn't. Yeah, you're too. You're a little young. I might be a little you're too a little young, young for it. You've got to be like my-ish age or older, I would say. Mm -hmm. But our new series is called Flannel Graph, and I'm very excited about so it. Fun. We're going to be going through a bunch of different stories uh, that Jesus told. It's going to be a really great time. Uh, Pastor Hattie is bringing the yes. message today. It's going to be so good. It's going to be great. And before we get to that message, we're going to spend just some time in worship together. Mm -hmm. Lord, when shall it be that earth will find her all in me? The fullness of the promise proved. Seal me with thy eternal love. The only thee I'm fain to find. I cast the world and sin behind Oh my Redeemer, hear this plea And let me find my all in thee and Show me your way, my love, my Lord Draw me to grace so strong and sure I run to your mercy where I am free let me find my own in me Lord I am thy be thou my side Lord I 
What's up, New Hope fam? What a great time of worship together. We would love to connect with you guys, and the best way to do that would be filling out that connect card. You can go ahead and click the link in the chat, share any praises, prayers. As a staff, we love to lift you guys up in prayers. We also have a prayer team that prays over you every week. Um, it's also a great way to get involved with New Hope. Yes. So if you're looking for more ways to get involved, you can go ahead and check out the connect card in the chat. Yeah, also in the chat right now, there's a link to our New Hope Here Kids. It's a service that's designed for your children, preschool, all the way up to elementary. Pastor Andrea, Pastor Anna have a great time playing so a game. So there's fun. a time of worship and then there's a teaching time. So right now, click that link in the chat. Grab a second device. Actually, do that in reverse order. <laughs> Grab a second device, then click the link. That's it. And then hand it to your children. Yes. They can focus on the message that's for them, and then you get to focus on the message that's for you. Perfect. And now it's time to give back to God his tithes and our offerings. The easiest way would just go ahead and click the link in the chat. Um, if this is your first time here with New Hope, we ask that you just take a pass. Feel free to take a pass. Enjoy the service. The service is a gift to you. And for those who do give faithfully every week through New Hope, we just want to say thank you. It allows us to move our mission forward of being the church. Yeah. Right now, church, we want to pray together, so let's pray. God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you uh, that we get to be together as a church family, and uh, we just ask that you um, help us to, to become closer as a family, whether it's through the chat or uh, whatever it may be. God, we just ask that you um, just build our relationships. Uh, and right now, God, we pray for Hattie. We pray for her message, and we just ask that you speak through her and that our hearts and our minds will be open to what you have to teach us today. God, you are so good. We thank you, and we pray this in your son Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, hello, church family. My name is Hattie, and I'm one of the pastors here, and I'm so thankful that you've joined with us today from wherever you are so that we can come together and hear God's Word and learn from God's Word, even though we aren't physically in the same room. And I'm especially glad that you're here today because we are starting a brand new series for the summer called Flannel Graph, Stories Jesus Told. And we're going to be talking about just different stories and teachings from Jesus. And you might ask, well, why flannel graph? Well, if you look behind me, that is a flannel graph. And if you think it looks old school, you are right. It is definitely old school. Flannel graphs have been used to tell Bible stories to children for decades. Some of you might have heard your very first Bible stories told using something like a flannel graph. And, and you'll see the board behind me is covered with flannel and there are different cutouts and objects on there. Um, the whole point is that these would be moved around to tell stories or to tell Bible stories using imagery to hopefully capture and grab the audience's attention. Now, for today's teaching, I won't be narrating a scene on the flannel graph, but stay tuned throughout the summer. Maybe we can talk Pastor West or Pastor Andrea into telling us a story using the flannel graph. I know we would all love to see that, especially from Pastor Andrea, because if you don't know this about her, she is great uh, with character voices. She's the best at that, so stay tuned. Well, we're going to be spending the summer diving into stories, and specifically stories that Jesus told. And some of Jesus' teachings or, or stories are called parables. And these parables, they are short and relevant, often really creative uh, stories that he told, not just to tell stories, to, but to communicate spiritual truths to believers. And Jesus used this style of teaching to kind of disrupt our way of thinking and invite us to consider a different way of living. And at the start of our summer series is a teaching called The Parable of the Sower. And I believe this is a great story for us to start with because it challenges us, it challenges the listener to consider how we receive God's Word. Do we hear it and believe it and let it change us? Or do we hear it and ignore what God is speaking to us? How will we be open to letting God's word permeate our lives and our hearts this summer? In the parable of the sower, or sometimes called the parable of the soils, uh, Jesus teaches about uh, the human heart and our response to God's word. And, and you'll see in just a moment, he gives us four different uh, examples of how our hearts might respond to what it is that he's trying to teach us. 
<clears throat> in this parable that we're going to look at, uh, we see that it is found in three of the four Gospels, three of the four different books of the Bible. And we're going to be reading from the book of Matthew today. And as Jesus be begins his message, we see him surrounded by just a, a large crowd of people who are really eager to hear from him, to hear from his teachings. And now, again, the flannel graph is behind me. It doesn't have all of the correct objects that we're going to be talking about in today's story. But as we read from the story, I want you to picture, uh, try to picture, just a different object, the different characters from the story. There's the farmer. Uh, there's uh, seeds, or think of like a bag of seeds that will be spread, and, and different types of grounds or soil, soft soil, maybe that you want to put your feet in, or uh, there's thorny ground. You definitely don't want to put your feet in that. But we can picture those things, right? Can't we? Uh, so picture that as we read uh, from the parable found in Matthew 13. It says this, A farmer went out to sow his seed, and as he was scattering his seed, some fell along a path, and birds came up and ate it. Some fell along rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seeds fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the path. And still other seeds fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, 160 or 30 times what was sown. Now, before we get too far, there's clearly a much deeper uh, meaning to the story than just a farmer throwing out some seed to produce a harvest. Jesus carefully included all of the different objects, all of the different details that he did in the story because he desires each of us to experience abundant spiritual growth. Here's what is at the center of this parable. We see the farmer, that, that's Jesus, and their seed, and that represents God's word or God's truth. And the soil that, uh, that I mentioned that we talked about uh, is used to describe the condition of our hearts. So those are kind of the three big players of this parable. And Jesus talked about the four different types of soil in this parable. And uh, the seed that the farmer spread fell onto different types of soil or different types of ground. There was a path, uh, rocky soil or, or shallow soil, uh, amongst uh, thorns, and then also into good soil. And the conditions of where the soil or where the seed was spread on the soil really determined how the seed grew and how lasting and fruitful the growth was. So we're going to spend some time looking at each type of soil and what they represent because they represent much more than, than just a type of ground or different type of soil. The first type is on a path, is on a path. So going back to the parable and in the scripture, it reads this. It says, some seed fell along the path and the birds came up and ate it. So here for the path, I picture uh, just a hard, dry path. It is well worn, it's well walked, well walked, and it's a hard surface. And the seed that fell on the path, it stayed on the surface. And it didn't produce any type of growth because it couldn't penetrate the hard ground that it had landed on. And like scripture said, it, the birds ended up eating it. This is like a person who hears God's word, they hear the gospel, and then it falls on deaf ears. God's word doesn't permeate this person's heart because over time they have hardened their heart to the gospel. Maybe they believe in false religions or, or counterfeit gods, and then that causes them to reject the truth of his word. Here's your first fill in the blank today for those of you who are note takers. The growth hindrance for, for this type of soil or this type of ground is a hardened heart. Is a hardened heart. Like the seed on a path, God's message never gets, gets absorbed and the person is sadly unaffected by the gospel. So that's the first type of soil. Let's go into the second type of soil, soil that Jesus describes and that is rocky ground. In the parable, it reads this. It said, some seed fell on rocky places. The seed was scattered where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, but just as quickly as it grew, it died out because it had no root. The seed that fell on this rocky soil is kind of like when we get excited about a New Year's resolution. 
Many of you probably started the new year with a resolution uh, with great enthusiasm. I won't ask you how that's going because we all know now it's June and, and January was a, a long time ago. But there's this great enthusiasm that we start the year out with. Maybe we want to read more, work out more, quit that bad habit, or, or to lose weight. And so we start off with just these great goals and this great passion. But then slowly that passion dies out, or maybe more quickly, and we, and we just don't want to admit it. But after a while, it's easier for us to forget the resolution that we set and keep doing the, thing, the things that we were doing last year. When a seed that is planted on rocky ground uh, is likely to start growing, it will grow, but it is short-lived. And that's because the roots aren't deep enough for the plant to sustain life. A person who is like rocky soil, they receive God's word, they receive the truth uh, with joy and excitement and oftentimes a lot of emotion. Uh, they are all in, but then their faith does not take root. When uh, persecution happens or when faith facing challenges that come because we live in a broken world, their faith shrivels up and it dies out. The growth hindrance for, for this type of person, for this type of soil, is a shallow faith. That's your next fill in the blank there, it's shallow faith. Just like plants have roots to, go, to grow deep, to get the water and the nutrients that they need to survive, Christians, we need deep roots in God's word to be deeply rooted in prayer and in community with other believers so that we can continue to grow and to nurture and to sustain our faith. That's what produces a faith that will last. And the third type of soil that uh, Jesus describes a farmer planting seeds in is a soil amongst thorns. Not the kind of soil we want to be standing in, soil amongst thorns. Jesus said other seed fell amongst thorns or, or weeds, uh, pokey weeds. We can all picture that this time of year, the kind you definitely don't want to step in, uh, which grew up and it choked out the plants. The seeds the farmer placed, they were able to grow amongst these thorns, but as they grew, there was not enough room for both the seed and the thorns to thrive. They were competing for the same uh, space and the same resources here. Seeds planted among the thorns are like people who they hear God's word and they believe it, but slowly over time they get distracted uh, from the things of the, this world. Things like money and status and sports and busyness, uh, worldly pleasures, they stunt their growth as Christians. And unfortunately, slowly over time, they lose interest in the things of God. Their growth eventually is hindered by the distractions from God's by distractions from God's word. The growth hindrance for a person with this type of soil is distractions or distractions from God's word. And I know that we can each recognize different thorns in our lives. Maybe they're big thorns or small thorns, but they hinder us from so much. But most importantly, they hinder us from living the life the way God wants us to live. And it's vital for us as Christians to guard our hearts against these type of distractions. And we can do that by asking God to help to remove those thorns and to remove those worldly distractions. And then to be people who make time to read and really to meditate on God's word. And finally, we get to the good soil. We get to the good soil. This type of soil produces good fruit, as the parable says. And it says it produces a crop of 160 or 30 times what was planted. This kind of soil is the kind that has been tilled up. It, it's soft and it, it, uh, it smells nice. I love the smell of good soil. I don't, I don't know about you or if that makes me weird. I have a small garden uh, where I live, and at the beginning of summer or the end of spring, I, I got this big bag of soil, and I was excited to plant some things in it. Of course, I took the soil and I spilled it all over my deck, but that's not a part of the parable. Uh, but once I made the soil into the planter, I, I took my plants and I planted them in there, uh, and in just a short couple days, uh, I saw growth. They produce growth, and now uh, that it's been about a month, they are able to be harvested. I'm able to eat the plants uh, that I have planted because it was good soil. They produced a good fruit. The seeds that are planted in good soil, that's like a person who not only hears God's word, 
but they hear it and they believe it and they allow it to produce growth in their lives. In the midst of hard seasons or, or circumstances, they remain unshaken because their trust in God has grown deep. And they have guarded their hearts to ensure that no thorns or weeds can become distractions to the will of God in their lives. They have cultivated uh, their hearts to be open to God's leading and to God's guiding. And their growth isn't hindered. It's actually encouraged because their heart is open. So the growth and courage or for this type of soil is an open heart. They have an open heart. This person is open to the Holy Spirit's leading in their life. They are willing to accept correction and direction that comes with a life that is surrendered to God's teaching. And I know it can be challenging to cultivate an open heart. It can be scary for us to say, God, here I am. Whatever you have for me, whatever your will is, I accept that. Maybe we don't feel ready for what he's calling us to do or uh, what he's calling us to give up or where he wants us to move or that habit that he wants us to stop. But I believe that we can trust in God's leading because he loves us and because he cares for us. And we don't need to be worried about being open to his moving in our lives. He wants to produce great things, great fruit with our lives, and that is all to his glory, all for his good purposes. So we might see ourselves reflected in one type of soil or two types of the soils, or, or maybe in all four, or maybe throughout our lives we've been each of these types of soils. Like the path or the, or the hard path, sometimes maybe we haven't made room for God's word in our lives. Or like the rocky ground, uh, sometimes we have these sparks of enthusiasm, but then that has died out over time. Or like the seed amongst thorns, the cares of this world, the, the hard things, the burdens that, that come with this world, they've choked out God's word in our lives and, and the fr fruit that it wants to produce. Or like the good soil, maybe we have had seasons where we have bear, bared good fruit with our lives. As we talked about in the beginning, Jesus told the parables, and this parable specifically, to challenge the listener, to challenge us to consider how we might receive God's word. Do we hear it and allow it to transform us? We each are the cultivators of our own soil, and how, for, how you care for your own heart will determine the life that you grow. That should be both a challenge and an encouragement for us today. So what if you're not the type of soil that you want to be? Well, great news for us, you don't have to stay where you are. Today is a new day to cultivate good soil, to ask God to soften your heart, uh, to be open to his truths, to be open to his leading and his guiding so that you can grow spiritually. Now, we've spent a lot of time talking about the soil, but this parable, this story is called the parable of the sower. And there's an incredible point that we shouldn't overlook that we can't miss about the farmer. In this parable, the farmer, he sows his seeds generously. And what the parable of the sower teaches us is that God is a generous God. He gives every kind of soil the chance to produce life. He extends his grace to everyone, regardless of how he finds us, regardless of how he finds you, regardless of what kind of soil you have cultivated up to this point in your life. Even though God knows that people might reject him, he gives grace anyways in hopes that they will choose to open their hearts and experience the abundant life that he came to give. If today is a day that you recognize that your heart has been hardened towards God, I pray that you would take a moment and open it up to Him. To open, up, to open it up to God's grace and His love for you. Through Jesus, I believe that we can be healed from our hardened hearts and, and from the brokenness and the damage that our hard hearts have caused. And to begin a relationship with God today, you can just say a simple prayer. Something like, God, I, I know that I'm not perfect. I know that I have hardened my heart towards you, and I've not lived the way that you've wanted me to live. 
Today I pray for your forgiveness and I accept the grace of Jesus, the free grace of Jesus. Help me to grow in my relationship with you. If you made that decision today, I, I ask to stick around to the end of the service. We have hosts that will be there uh, to give you a next step of faith and also to give you resources now that you've made this decision to open your hearts to Christ and to follow Him. Uh, they've just got some really, th uh, some really helpful things, so stick around to that. They'll share those with you at the end. And church, as we wrap up, i got one last point for us today. We all need to be like the farmer. The farmer in the parable that we read about, he sows generously and he sows on all different types of soils because he knows the more seeds that take root, the bigger the crop and the bigger the harvest. Church, you know this, we are all about lost people being found, seeing people uh, who don't know Jesus come to know Jesus. And we're also all about seeing people grow in their relationship with God. Let this conviction guide us to share God's truth with everyone. We need to sow generously as the farmer sows generously. If you have allowed God's word to grow in you, embrace the call as the disciple maker and spread God's seed. We don't need to overcomplicate it, which we tend to do sometimes. It, this looks like maybe simply sharing what God has done in your life, how he has changed your life. So do acts of kindness in Jesus' name. Invite others over to watch the service with you. Maybe next week you have someone join you so that they can hear God's truth uh, through New Hope here. Or, or, or share the service with them. Send them the link and say, hey, I want you to check this out. We can sow God's seed generously. And also, we don't need to worry about the conditions uh, of people's hearts. Only God sees that. We need to remain good soil. Each of us remain good soil, remain to God's open to God's work in our life, and be the farmer who sows the seeds of the gospel generously. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your word and the truth that it brings us. And God, we do pray that as your people today, we just would be open to how you are teaching and moving in our lives. Lord, sometimes we get tempted to, to close ourselves off to you, or maybe we get afraid to the, of the things that you want us to do. But we just pray, Lord, that we would be people who are eager to follow you, to follow your commands, to follow your words for us. And Lord, we just pray that you would cultivate good soil in each of, each of our lives and also to help us to live in a way that just represents you to the people around us. Help us to share your truth with the people around us so that they can be found people in you. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, church, thanks again for joining us today. And we hope that you found today's teaching valuable and that encourages you to take a next step. Yeah, I'm so excited for this new series. And yes. next week's going to be a little different. We're kind of taking a pause from the series right. for yep. one week and then jumping back into Flannel Graph. But it's going to be yeah. such a great series. And Pastor Hattie kicked it off in such an awesome way today. She did. I know that uh, I'm sure that all of you learned a lot today. And, and she also offered us to take the most important next she step did. that we ever yep. take. We always talk about next steps here at New Hope. And, and the most important one is just saying yes to Jesus yeah. and accepting the gift that he gave us of salvation. And so if that's you, if, if you're one of the people that did that, first of all, congratulations. Yeah, it's, all of the woohoos. We're celebrating with you. <laughs> fist bump and woohoo. That was really good. Well, that's a good bump, celebration. A, fist, fist raise. Fist pump. Fist pump. That's the yeah, fist right. pump. <laughs> <laughs> we're so excited for you. We're, we're, it's the best decision you're ever going to make. And we want to come alongside you and support you too. We don't just want you to make that decision and then go, what? What does that mean now? Right. Like, what do I do? And so there's a there's a number on the screen right now. I believe it's 701-501-8002. And if you just text NEXT to that word, we will be able to just connect with you and, and give you some resources yep. and encourage you and, uh, and just kind of continue to support you along the way because yeah. we de definitely don't want you just out on your own. We want to we want to be here yep. for you. Um, and you can also fill out a connect card and indicate on there um, that you gave your life to Christ as well. And, and we would love to, to reach out to you. But man, we're just so excited for you. Yes, we are. And if you made that decision or if you've been 
a follower of Jesus for a, for a long time, yeah. we have a next step that is perfect for you. Or if you're not following him yet. Or if you're not and following you're, him. You're, and just you're just kind of curious. trying to learn That's more. That's true. Yep. If you're just joining us, yep. this is for you. Yes. We have a podcast. It's called The Girl Podcast. Mm-hmm. comes out Monday mornings on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Did I get them all right? Yeah, you didn't say yes. Apple Music this time. You said <laughs> Apple Podcasts. That was all right. Good. <laughs> I'm getting better at this, maybe. Uh, but anyway, David and Pastor Leo, yeah. they, they host kind of like a Bible study style. Yeah, it's been um, really fun so Started far. going through Romans recently. Mm-hmm. And it, it, the first episode was great. Yes. And so I encourage you, uh, check it out tomorrow if you're watching this yeah. on Sunday. Uh, check it out <laughs> Monday. Yes. Uh, it's, it's just a great time. Yeah, uh, this is our second week in a, kind of deep diving yeah. the book of Romans. And so if you want to join with us, read through, really just read through the whole first right. first chapter of Romans. Yeah. The first, first episode of this, which I think was episode 103. Yes, that's um, correct. So that's where we dove into the first 17 verses of chapter one. And then yeah. t- tomorrow or, or whatever, when episode 104 comes yes. out, that's where we're <laughs> going to deep dive the rest of it. So read along with us, then join us on the Grow Podcast. Yeah. It's such an awesome time to, to continue to grow in our faith. Mm-hmm. And then come back next week. We have Pastor Mark Butcher who's going to be here yes. giving us an amazing message. We'll have some yep. more great worship. We love you, New Hope family. We're so glad that you're here. And until we see you next week, let's go and be the church.